All right, I think we're back. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it's another photo editing session with Tim. Um, my name is Tim Mensa. Excited to be doing another iteration of these. They're always very fun, very chill. Um, so yeah, we can just kind of dive right into it. Um, if you're new to kind of tuning in to this stream series, um, it's essentially just me going through usually old photos because I haven't found the time to take uh, new or enjoying like pictures. So um, I kind of just go back and relive some memories and uh, bring new context to old photos that I've taken. Um, and I, I primarily work in the Photos application, uh, which is pre-installed on Mac operating systems. Um, it's essentially a free application if you have a Mac. Um, it's got a very great, um, very great uh, editing like engine. There's a lot of cool parameters that you can work with. Um, I prefer it obviously over like a paid service um, because it's technically included. Um, so it definitely helps kind of delve into some creative aspects without feeling like there's a huge paywall associated with it, um, which is pretty nice. So yeah, let's just jump right in. Hey Claire, how's it going? Um, so yeah, uh, a couple, a little bit of context for some of these photos. So a lot of these were taken in like late 2017, early 2018. We have a special guest here. This was actually um, in Reynolds Coliseum in 2016. It was like, as you can see by the sign, like right around election time that year. Um, but yeah, a lot of these other ones were taken kind of like late 2017, early 2018. This one was taken, um, I think, early last year in 2020. But we'll kind of just start at random and see what we've got. Um, so this is actually a picture that I took on my film camera. Uh, my mom actually has this like little point and shoot film camera. I guess um, it's like a new trend now, but... Um, I'm pretty sure like my baby pictures were taken on this camera and I think she had found it like a few years back and I was like, can I just have it? And she was like, yeah, sure. I honestly haven't used it. I forgot I had it. Um, so I've kind of started taking it around with me. I think this picture was taken maybe January or December of 2017. Um, just a plane in the moon. It looks pretty cool. I was able to like get both in frame. Um, yeah, I don't know. So. We'll just kind of dive in. Again, if you're new, so Photos has this um, editing engine that's really cool. If you hit these drop down items, you can see like a bunch of different um, settings to choose from, different things to kind of toggle. I'll just open them all so you can see. And I like photo editing because it feels very low stakes. You know, I feel like the hardest part is probably taking the photo. Um, but once you have it, you can always, you know, change it as much as you want, make the changes look super drastic, you know, warp it, kind of mess with everything. And if you don't like it, you can just revert to original and start from scratch. Um, so that's always pretty liberating. Um, I like this one, simple but very pretty. Yeah, I agree. Um, it reminds me. There's a um, musical artist called King Cruel. He has an album called The Ooze. Um, and the album art is like what looks like a car or like a plane or something, just like um, streaking through the blue sky. Um, so I think I pulled some inf inspiration from that when I was taking this picture. Um, but yeah, I think I'll just kind of start messing with the light. It's a little bit underexposed. Um, so I just kind of want to see how much color and brightness I can bring in before it's too much. I think because this one is so artsy, just, you know, via the subjects being a plane in the moon, like I could kind of take it in a, you know, super artsy direction. I could really just like warp the colors, kind of make it look far from realistic, but, you know, in doing so really like evoke a different feeling. Um, 
Like I'm really just pushing the blues right now just to kind of see, you know, what, what feeling that can evoke. Um, which is fun, you know, like it never has to be um, super realistic, super, I think the, the um, subject of the image kind of lends itself and I've said this in previous streams, but the subject kind of lends itself to like what you can do with it, what may feel right to do with it. Um, because these are pretty like um, artistic subjects, especially juxtaposed together, you can kind of just mess around with it um, until you get a feeling that you like from it. The bright blue makes a big difference. I agree, yeah. Um, Let's see, even like black and white looks like a very cool effect. Um, you know, kind of pushing um, some of the contrast, the different like uh, dark and light areas of the sky, the plane becoming like a shadow, um, the moon becoming like a light source. So that looks really cool too, actually. Um, I'm not really like married to, to the color or black or white. I think both look really cool in their own unique way. Um, maybe I'll, I'll go back to color just to, just to see what else I can do with it. Maybe I'll try to make this one a little bit more realistic. So I'll turn down the saturation a bit. I think vignetting could be cool um, for this picture in particular just because of where the subjects fall in the, the image. Yeah, it gives me a very like nostalgic feeling. I think shooting on film just kind of naturally um, does that. I think the format is a little bit older, so when you get photos back, um, it can give it a, a nostalgic feeling. And usually when you've taken those photos, months are probably going by before you get the film developed. Um, for anyone that does shoot film out there, I usually go to um, a film de development store called The Photoshop, which is based in Cary, North Carolina. I believe they're black owned. Um, very great business. I've gotten all my film in Raleigh um, developed there. So small plug for The Photoshop. And mess with the white balance. Yeah, I like that, that deep blue. I love the selective color tool. It can really like pick apart um, different colors in your image and um, you can lend them to like be super, it, it essentially like takes one hue and you can like really just change the color of that hue. Um, so it can be super dramatic, or you can kind of just dial in a little bit um, to get a certain feeling across. Whoa, that looks wild. I kind of like, I've mentioned this before, I love um, making blue hues in photos appear to be a little bit more green and making green hues in photos appear to be a little bit more blue. Um, I don't know why. I, I think maybe it like it's part of that nostalgia factor, um, but it just looks very pretty to me. I might bump up the lighting a little bit. This is where we started. Oh wait. This is where we started, and this is where we're at now. Um, so definitely a you know very dramatic difference. I think it's hard to notice how far a photo can be edited when you first start because you know my eyes are already like accustomed to what this looks like, but kind of adding in all these um, all these colors and like the brightness, a little bit of contrast, like. It really just gives an entirely new feel. Um, 
which can be ex especially nice if it's an older photo. That color does give it a nostalgic feel, like an old, yeah, yeah, it really does. Um, yeah, this could be from like any time period. You know, if you told me this is a picture from like the 80s, I would, I would believe it. Um, well, thank you. Um, I enjoy editing these photos, so I'm glad there's always someone tuning in. Um, I appreciate the, the support. Um, so I think I'll probably leave this one kind of as it is. I love just like um, turning on the black and white scale, the gray scale, just to kind of like uh, compare and contrast because that gives it an even more, you know, nostalgic feeling. This kind of could be from like the 50s or the 60s, but um, I think I'll leave it in color for now. All right, let's see what else we're working with. Uh, we'll jump to this one. Um, if you can guess, this is my dad. I believe this was his, let's see, three years ago, his 57th birthday. Um, so we went out to a restaurant to celebrate, um, and they had this frame and sombrero <laughs> to um, commemorate his birthday. So I took a picture. It was like a little cupcake um, on the table in front of him. But yeah, I honestly forgot this picture like existed and I was kind of going back through my old film rolls and I saw this and thought this would be a great one to edit. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of start messing around. I, I Again, I've mentioned in like previous streams, like sometimes if I don't really know where to start, I'll just use the auto enhance feature just to see what that does. And I kind of like what it's doing here, just adding a little bit more like saturation. Um, you know, kind of adding a little bit more reddish hue, which I think, again, because it's taken on film, kind of gives it a nostalgic feeling. Um, what a great birthday. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I hope they still have those because that's a, I think all restaurants should have something like that. Um, I went through college photos recently and it was amazing to see what, it, yeah, it, going through like pictures from like a specific time period of your life is like, yeah, it's it's a very nice feeling, um, especially pictures that I feel like, you know, these have just kind of been sitting on my Google Drive. I don't even know if like, you know, people that are in some of these photos remember that the, you know, these pictures exist. Um, so it's kind of cool to like um, relive them a little bit. Um, so I think I'll, I'll start from where this auto enhance is doing. I kind of like what it's doing. I might um, just mess around with the color a little bit. See what that does. I kind of like the like super saturated look for this image in particular. There's a lot of pretty colors in you know um, behind him in this. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. I that might be part of the frame or it might have just been like the wall behind him. But I love the little flowery details um, and the colors that are coming through from that. Kind of mess around with the light a little bit. Was missing my key settings um, so yeah there's more drop down options in the light and color um, parameters you can get really really specific kind of adjust the saturation um, I kind of like it bumped up a little bit here um, yeah this is what I was looking for so in the light parameters you can kind of get very specific look at the brilliance the exposure it was like a very bright image. I used the flash on the camera um, and it wasn't too far away from him. So I think, you know, bumping up the contrast a little bit, not too much, and turning down the exposure um, will help just like add a little bit more detail back into the photo. Feels like there's too much white. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I want to cut back on that a little bit. Maybe, yeah, upping the black point a little bit just to make the darkest parts of the photo even darker, just to, again, cut back on some of that light. Just kind of take away the exposure and dial it back into what feels 
natural. I think I, uh, about where it was, negative uh, 0.07 looks good. Um, maybe mess with the brilliance. So when I bump it up, you can see like the details in the balloons get a little bit more defined, which I think I want here. Let's see. So we can kind of see what Vibrance is doing, just really pushing those colors. I do want the colors to be prominent, but not too prominent to where it's like, um, a lot. Again, I th it's also like kind of a close frame, so I think it just makes the photo um, feel very lively, and there's a lot of different colors going on. Um, which for this I don't mind, but it, it, it is a little bit busy, um, so I think cutting back on some of that light might help um, make it a little more pleasing. Let's see what I can do here. Kind of messing with the temperature a little bit. It's not doing too much, and I don't really love either one, so I might just leave that. Actually, I might make it a little cooler. Let's see what I can do with some of these colors in the background. Kind of mess with the greens a little bit. Maybe a vignette might be helpful here to cut back on some of the brightness. Yeah, I definitely think that helps. And let's just see where we were before. So we can start here. We're cutting back some of that brightness now, adding a little bit more detail while still kind of keeping that like nostalgic feeling to it, still making those colors um, pop really well. Kind of mess with the... Yeah, turning down the highlights I think is, is key for this one in particular. Um, I might bump the exposure up just a little. Kind of see where we're at. Yeah, I think the lighting, getting the lighting just right is probably the biggest challenge on this one. Um, let's Just kind of seeing what the, this tool, the selective color tool, is picking up. Um, seeing what I can do with it. really nice. Um, just out of curiosity I might see what um, black and white looks like. Yeah this really like messes with the contrast. Um, every parameter kind of like affects a different part of the image um, which is cool. Um, just cool to see like what it looks like in this context. Again I, I do think I prefer it in color. Um, but it's just nice to like have the option to kind of select on and off. 
Um, hmm. Yeah, I like I like what that does. Um, with his sweater, it just gives it a lot warmer of a tone. It's, I think I'm starting to get lost in the weeds a little bit here, so I might take a step back and just, oops, there we go. Um, and just kind of leave it as it is. I really like it. Um, I love the picture just as a whole. I love the different colors. I love the frame that makes it feel like even older than it is because it, it looks like a pretty old uh, birthday frame that they use. Um, yeah, I, I love everything about this picture. Um, so I don't want to get too too lost in it. So I think I might just leave it as it is. Turned out very nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's keep it moving. We'll do this one. I think this is from, I want to say this was January of 2018. Um, one of the few, <laughs> few snow days um, on campus. I'm hoping for, gonna manifest some for, for this winter because um, campus looks very pretty in the snow. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just start kind of I like what the auto enhance is doing, just bringing up some of those colors a little bit. Um, I think this was also a film picture, so you can see like the sky and like the trees kind of have that like nostalgic feeling, artsy feeling. I just like love what those colors are naturally doing. Um, again, it's another picture where like the light source is kind of coming from over the trees. Um, so it's in our foreground is a lot darker. We can try to balance that out a little bit. Oh, there we go. Um, maybe take away some of those highlights. Kind of up the saturation, see what that does. Yeah, I really hope we get another snow day because um, it's just so pretty, especially in especially in North Carolina, just with the amount of trees that we have. Mm. Yeah, I'm a sucker for pushing those greens. I don't want to push it too far, but I do I do love to see those come through a bit. And again, I, I've said this in previous streams, but it's always worth um, kind of like making things look super dramatic and then dialing it back in to something that feels more reasonable. Because um, it's kind of hard to like click within, you know, one to two points and then you can't really see what, what the difference is making. Let's see what auto vignette does. Did a decent amount. I think that does help cut back on some of the brightness around the edges. I'll just make it a little less dramatic. I'm not a huge fan of vignetting, but it does, in certain contexts, it definitely helps a lot. Let's kind of see where we started. Yeah, so we're definitely evening out the lighting a little bit in the image, um, making the foreground pop a little bit more bringing out some of the colors like in the trees and the walkway. Yeah, that looks nice. Kind of want to see what we can do with the sky. Yeah, just 
just make the sky look a little bluer. Kind of torn. I like the I like this lighter blue. I think it is more true to the original image, but I also like kind of what this dark blue does. I think I might stick with the lighter. Um, let's see if I can cut back on some of this. Maybe upping the black point. might have made it worse. <laughs> so we can just undo or command Z for any small changes you don't love. doing let's see that so it is kind of cutting back on some of the brightness from the trees but it's also cutting back on brightness from the overall image like the foreground as well if I up the brightness it really does like blow out what's in the trees but if I cut it back down it kind of gives us more detail but then the overall image is darker so maybe if we up the exposure where we were yeah this kind of has a little bit more detail you can see the branches a little bit more it's not as blown out as the original but there's still like it's still retaining some of the brightness it's not like a completely dark image and the green is popping a little bit more from the trees yeah that looks nice let's see what's saturating a little bit more would do I like that. Doing this with the brilliance. I think I like it about there. Maybe I could up the vignette a little more. Can't tell if I like it with or without. I think it helps. I might leave it. Yeah, I'll leave it. Um, so yeah, I'm liking how this looks. Um, this kind of brings out a little bit more of the colors, brings back a little bit more of the detail that was blown out from like the snow, the sunlight on the snow, like reflecting into the camera. I may have had flash on, so that might have like contributed to like some of the um, white light that's in the photo but we were able to get some of that detail back which is nice and it's just so pretty like looking at all the snow um, so you don't lose that like pretty dreamy kind of element so I think I'll leave that one there and keep it moving hope everyone's doing good who's tuned in let's see I'll do this one. So this is my friend Othmika, who I actually probably have not seen since taking this photo. Um, this was like, actually I think this was three years ago today um, from when I checked my photo memories. She had hit me up to kind of just do like a photo shoot. I was like taking a lot of pictures at the time and she was like, I'm gonna go to the Arboretum and just kind of like get some photos done. Um, so we just kind of took a little trip over there. Um, this was like golden hour. So like kind of end of the day. Um, and yeah, we just kind of walked around the Arboretum, took a bunch of pictures. It was really nice. Um, 
I like the purple and red. Yeah, yeah. This is like obviously like deep fall. I think fall is maybe a little further along than it is this November. Um, but yeah, the like purples and the trees, it's kind of reflecting in her hair a little bit um, and her glasses. Yeah, I, I love the colors in this. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can bring out. Just try the auto enhance. Whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, that did a lot. Um, it just really added a lot of like color, brightness, um, detail immediately. So the auto enhance can really just be like uh, a truly hit feature. Sometimes it does miss, but it's always worth giving it a shot. Um, this is a great base. I almost don't even want to do anything to it, but um, we'll, we'll tinker around and see what we can do. I, I love the lighting as it is. I honestly don't want to change anything with the light. Um, I think it would just be like getting certain colors to pop. Um, so let's mess with the saturation, just see. Oh. Yeah, the the tones in this picture are just very like very fall. Um, it works very well with her outfit. Yeah, I like it. Um, let's see. Let's just jump straight into selective color. See what we can do with the greens in the back. I don't know, I, I kind of don't want to mess with it, but um, I don't know, for the sake of the stream. Let's see what vignetting does. I think vignetting works really well in this scenario too. It definitely gives it like, I feel like a professional look. Um, looks like a, a quality headshot. Um, yeah, I think the context for it makes sense here. Um, I still might leave it out just because of my own personal preference, but you can see like what what it adds to the photo. Um, you know, it really just kind of like blurs out the the edges of the photo and, and gives a lot of. Um, maybe I'll just make it a little more subtle. I'll do that because it does add a lot. Yeah, I like that. A subtle vignette. Be right back. Yeah, take your time. Uh, thanks for letting me know. Um, let's see what we can do with the reds. Whoa. Oh yeah, a lot of red in this photo. Or at least that's what it's picking up. Hmm. I think I like that. Just very subtle, like, darkening the reds. Um, just to kind of lean into that like purplish, like reddish hue that we're getting. Um, yeah, I think I like that a lot. Let's see where we started. Wow. Yeah. Othmika, if you're <laughs> somehow watching, um, I hope you're doing well. We took some, we took some cool photos. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm so inclined to just leave it. Um, I could, I guess, get a little more specific, but, uh, yeah, I'm just such a fan of, like, the colors that are coming through, um, it's, like, the perfect exposure, like, it just, it feels like a very well shot, thought out <laughs> picture, even though I kind of was just messing around, um, yeah, I might just leave it at that, I really like that picture. Let's see what else we got. Uh, <laughs> so this is my longtime good friend Ian. This was from what, January 19, 2018. So this is about three years ago. Three, I guess almost four years ago. Wow, crazy. Um, I don't know what we were doing. I, I think we were just walking on campus. This is like right outside of the atrium but 
there's like some I think I might have put like um, like glass or something over the lens to kind of give it this like blurring effect um, which is really cool I, I kind of wish I still took creative images like this um, yeah I, I, I think we were doing something I'm just kind of messing around um, this would have been my sophomore year so a lot of our like downtime we would just like take our cameras and like walk around campus um, that was like a fun pastime for my friends and I so I do miss those days. Um, yeah, the auto enhances is doing a pretty good job of just like brightening up our subject, um, giving a little more detail to like his face while still kind of like emphasizing these like cool like distortion effects that we have like around the corners. Um, let's see. I might just mess with the lighting a little. See how dramatic I can get it. Maybe reduce the highlights a tad. Yeah, there's already so much color in this. I, I don't think there's too much need to tinker with them, but why not? I think the vignette might be helpful here just because we've got so much brightness from the vending machines it kind of takes away from Ian so let's see what the auto vignette does yeah that helps a lot I might actually leave it that traumatic because um, it kind of helps you know soften out the sides and really bring more detail to like the center of the image might bump up the exposure a little And then maybe the strength of the radius a little bit more. Yeah, that's looking cool. Let's see what else we can do. Sometimes, where is it? Sometimes I hit this like auto levels just to see what it does. Sometimes it like helps balance out the colors a little bit more. In this case, it's not really doing anything, so I'll just leave it off. Again, kind of just liking how it looks already. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Ooh, the black and white gives some cool, like, feeling to it. Just, like, entirely different, but still kind of artistic and like expressive but I think I'll leave it off for now maybe I'll cut back on the saturation just a tad let's see yeah, I think about right there is good let's see where we started yeah you can see how much detail is brought back in from like the sides that were kind of blown out the light is falling kind of more here on the image, whereas before it was definitely more focused here. Um, you need to wear the mask in front of your PC. Uh, I just chose to. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. Um, Again, a lot of different like color elements in the photo, so I don't want to try to mess with too much. Um, really just want to bring out the subject a little bit and just add a little more like depth to the photo, which I think from the original we definitely did. Um, just kind of manipulating the light a little bit to focus more on Ian as opposed to like the vending machines and like the cool like color filters that are like um, kind of on the edges of the image. Um, so yeah, I like that. That's a good time. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do this one again. Just 
pretty nothing really to this picture i don't even remember why i took it this is um in turlington this was the dorm room that ian and i lived in our sophomore year of college um really liked this room we, yeah we just got like nice natural lighting i think i just loved like seeing like the sun kind of like fall into the room um you know you can kind of see it cascading on some of our succulents this soap yeah it's just like a nice little color detail um i don't know yeah it just feels very like um domestic or like homey um yeah just like it very simple let's see what color enhance does okay just messing with the light a little bit hmm i might leave it off and just kind of mess with it myself this time around let's see i think the lighting is like a huge factor of this image um you know kind of seeing it like refract off of the soap bottle off of the sink um so that's kind of like the main artistic element going on here oh yeah i like that i won't mess with that too much i kind of want to retain a lot of like what the light is doing in the original just kind of make it look a little bit more dramatic um, by kind of upping the black point maybe upping the brightness yeah the um, upping the brightness a little bit let's see let's see what saturation does Ooh, just gives it a lot more warmth I don't want to mess with the succulents. Just get those to pop a little more. Yeah, that looks nice. Mm. Let's see. Again, another one where I'm kind of like, I don't really want to do too, too much to it. I, I really like a lot of what's already happening. I guess our main subject is the soap bottle. Let's kind of restart and see. So yeah, I like that peachy tone. I don't want to um, alter that too much. Ooh. Just a tiny bit. Let's see where we were. Where we are now. Yeah, just very simple color adjustments um, and lighting adjustments. Let's see. If I turn the vignette on. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to retain some of the color that's here, kind of highlight this part of the image. So I don't, I don't want the vignette to to cut back on that. I kind of like what's happening in the edge of this image here. I might up the black point a little bit, just to again really make it dramatic. Let's see where we were. Where we are now. Yeah, I like that. That's really nice. I might cut back on the brightness just a hair. Maybe the highlights just a hair. Maybe we have the brightness. That looks nice. I think I'm going to leave that one as it is. Um, the soap bottle was kind of like blown out at the bottom. There's not too much I can really do about that, but I kind of don't mind it as long as it's um, 
maybe I could uh, cut back on some of that a little bit or mess with the brilliance Whoa. there we go we're still kind of keeping a lot of the like um, lighting elements but not blowing it out too much um, it does kind of blow out a little bit in these corners but I think ultimately it still works for like the context of the image there's enough kind of like around to to be visually appealing without this being so distracting um, so yeah there's there's always like good things to take out of an image even if it isn't a quote unquote perfect perfectly shot perfectly lit image um, yeah I really like this one so I'll probably leave that as such Cool, almost done. Um, yep, let's get to Miss First Lady. This was really cool. Um, again, this was like a month, month and a half into my first semester of college, and you know, seeing the First Lady at an event on campus for free like was kind of insane. I didn't think I'd have experiences like that, especially just starting out in college. Um, yeah, the, I remember the line was like crazy to get into Reynolds. Um, but I was with a group of friends. We all skipped class that day. I think it was like a Wednesday. Um, and just went to go see her speak. Um, it was very cool. So let's see what we can do. I think I took this, I like borrowed a camera from the library at the time. Um, so a lot of the images that I have from this event I took using our, our library technology. So small plug for the um, NCSU Library Tech Lending Program. Ooh. I, I kind of like it. I might just start from my own base and see kind of what I can get. Um, yeah, obviously the, the blue is very prominent in this image, but we also have all these like very vibrant colors from her dress. Um, so I kind of want those to pop out a little bit more. <laughs> Sponsored by Tech Lending, truly. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's not too much I need to do with the lighting. I might, yeah, add a little more contrast, a little more black point, just to get her to pop a little bit more. Shout out to the tech lending for the adapter on the stream. Yes, shout out. Thank you, tech lending team. Let's see. Let's try to get some of the red in her dress to pop a little more. I always need a last minute adapter, same here. So ironically enough, the main colors we're working with are red, white, and blue. So using my kind of rule, I'm going to try to just ever so slightly green out some of those blues. Just getting some of the color to pop. The lighting is very good in the photo. Um, she's very well lit. Um, so there's not too much I need to do there. Could kind of experiment and just see. Well, I kind of like that darker contrast. Maybe upping the shadows.
That's looking nice. It almost reminds me more of like a picture from 2008 than 2016. This one has so many bright colors, it's looking great. Thank you, yeah, I, I love the dress she was wearing, the backgrounds, the, everything that's in the foreground. Um, there's a lot of nice colors to work with in this one. Let's try the vignette. Let's see what that does. Yeah, makes it definitely more of like a, I almost get like news tabloid vibes. Which is maybe why I stray away from it, but it does it does help in this context. Um, let's see without, with, yeah, just ever so slightly. <clears throat> I like that. That's looking really nice. It's looking dramatic, which it's the first lady, so it, it is dramatic. Um, it's really like lending itself to the colors that she's wearing, as well as like the colors in the background, um, but she's still very much standing out. Um, let's see what the, if levels will do anything. I'm not really noticing anything. Oh, I kind of like that definition. I have no idea really what it's doing, but maybe I'll dial it back in. So it's a little more, you can see kind of like in the lettering in the background, just adds a little more detail, which I actually do like. Subtle, but effective. Maybe I'll up the, oop. Uh, maybe I will up the, and adding a little more. Yeah, that looks great from where we were. Everything's kind of in focus here. Um, you know, it doesn't really like, you know, kind of looking at it without being at it is like, oh yeah, that's a nice photo. But here we can really see like, oh, okay, it's the first lady. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I like that. I like the colors that are coming through. Um, I like the like refined detail to like her kind of blurring out some of the um, details on the side. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, I think we've got one more. This one is kind of just a, a challenge. This is a self-portrait taken by my girlfriend, Kate. Um, this was taken on black and white film. So it's inherently devoid of color. Um, but I kind of just want to see, this is more just a test for myself, like, what could be done, if anything at all, to kind of like manipulate it, even though there is no color in it. Um, so kind of just like an experimental run. This might be, um, I don't know, it might, it might flop, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try it together. So I'm curious to see what Auto Enhance will do. I think a lot of the, yeah, a lot of what's gonna happen ultimately is just gonna be with like messing with the lighting seeing what we can do with the lighting within the photo to invoke either a deeper feeling or um, maybe a deeper sense of nostalgia or like pointing out like certain details in the image. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. Always love the graininess of this one. Yep, shout out Kate, she took this picture. I do love the graininess in this one too. Um, yeah, it just feels, yeah, I don't know. Black and white film, highly recommend. It's very cool. I wonder what the saturation does. It does something. It's very subtle, but it does like, you can kind of see the the gray scale is a little bit more bluish, more um, lacking where here it's kind of almost like a hint warmer. Um, so that's kind of interesting seeing like what saturation does to um, black and white. Um, yeah, I have no idea where to go with this, so I'm just going to kind of roll with it. I don't think selective color will do anything here, obviously. Um, because there are no colors it can detect, even though these trees are green. 
I'm sure it can pick up like just ever so like slight hints of color, but for the most part, it is kind of um, is not really picking up anything, which is to be expected. Just kind of wanted to experiment with that. Let's see. Let's try and see what noise reduction does. So this might affect the graininess of the photo. Curious. Yeah, it actually does a lot. So if we don't do anything, we've got a, a lot of these like, let me see if I can zoom in. I have no idea how to zoom in. Um, maybe the cropped one. Um, I'll figure that out for next time. But um, yeah, so the noise reduction can add a, a, a lot of different um, context of this as well because the film is naturally so grainy if we reduce the noise a lot it almost gives it like a, a blurred out you know it definitely takes away a lot of the detail almost makes it look way older um, way less sharp way less defined which I think for black and white can lend itself to like create a different emotion um, let's kind of roll with that let's see Let's see if we can really lean into like and make this look even older than it is. Um, let's mess with the vignetting. Subtle. Let's see. So here, yeah, and our lighting is what's really gonna change the. Um, the feeling of this this image it's definitely going to be in the lighting open our shadows oh wow let's kind of see where we started so we were here and now we're kind of yeah it's kind of making it look a little bit older removing some of that detail I wonder what the black and white uh, oh it does very very oh wait this is color my bad haha -ha. um, oh yeah it does nothing because um, it already registers that it's black and white that's pretty interesting wow Let's see what else we can do. I wonder if this will do anything. Probably not. I see very minimal changes, but I also might just be um, imagining. OK, I do see some changes with the tint. Um, you can kind of see what it's doing like on the shirt and the trees, that's interesting. It's kind of more messing with the lighting underneath it, even though there's no real like color there. I wonder if temperature, okay, so temperature does a lot too. Um, interesting. Ooh, so now it's really starting to look a lot older. We're removing a decent bit of detail. I kind of want to go back. Let's see where we were. We were here, and we're here. Yeah, it's looking cool. You could tell me this was like the 40s. Maybe not with the shorts or the <laughs> shoes, but everything else looks very dated. Um, hmm, I wonder what else I can do. I can mess with the, the sharpen. Oh, that did a lot. That's kind of like bringing back artificial detail into the image, which I don't really think I want for this context. I don't think that's really doing anything, so I'll just turn it off. A little more. Yeah, 
think the vignette is really helping it make really helping it make what really helping it <laughs> look a lot older um I'm I'm kind of good with that. I don't know. There's not really too many other things I'm I'm learning that I can really do. The vibrance is like ever so slightly affect. Oh, the cast is doing something too. Hmm, that's cool. Hmm, that's cool too. Mm. Oh, I think I like that. Again, where we were, where we are. Where we were, where we are. So yeah, definitely just looks way older. Um, has taken out a lot of that detail. Um, but it's still, yeah, it still like has a feeling to it. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was an interesting experience experiment. Um, I didn't really know what, how editing a an inherently black and white photo would look like using all these different parameters. Um, so that was kind of helpful to see. But yeah, that's, those are all the photos I have for today. Let's kind of review. We've got this one, this one, this one. And usually when I, this is probably my favorite of this series. I just love the colors that are in this. Um, usually when I do edit photos, like I will um, kind of like take a break and come back, revisit them. If I'm editing a lot of photos that are kind of similar style, I try to see like, okay, um, what did I do in this photo that I think worked really well? Um, you know, are there like little parameters that I just adhere that might work well um, in a different photo, in a different context? Um, so it's always good to kind of like, if you're doing a lot at once, like take a break, come back, you know, view it with a fresh set of eyes, um, and then see how else you can manipulate it. You can also, I'm pretty sure you can duplicate these photos um, somewhere. Oh, for whatever reason. I can't with this, but there is an option usually. Um, so you can always like um, kind of have one of like where, you know, the original um, and then like a, a test one to kind of like try out everything that you want to try out and, and see what effects are doing what, um, but you're not, I guess, ruining the photo, so to speak. Although you can never really ruin it because you can always revert to original. Um, so yeah, I think that wraps up today's photo editing with Tim session. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. This is probably one of my favorite ones so far. Um, which is nice to like tap back into different memories, um, from different periods of my life. Um, and yeah, the, the photos I think kind of all had like different quirks to them that made them like fun to engage with and edit. Um, so yeah, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, I think we'll be doing this again in December. I'm pretty sure. Um, but we'll definitely be doing something for like finals week. Um, kind of having like different content come out around then. So stay tuned for that. Thank you to the moderator and Claire for helping orchestrate this. Thanks to everyone that tuned in. Um, yeah, I will see y'all next time.